we're going to talk about be wealthy. All right. Now, before I even move any further, you need to explain the spelling mistake to the Afrikaans guy next to you, please. Okay. Otherwise, they're not going to understand what we're talking about. Okay. <laughs> if you did not know, it is spelled incorrectly. Okay. If you did not know. Okay. Just laugh like you know. You are. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill <give> them, <them>, go. <laughs> so the, the spelling mistake is deliberate, it's intentional, and so we're going to talk about being wealthy. And the, the subtopic is a beginner's guide to life. A beginner's guide to life. We're going to read from Luke ch chapter 12, just three verses this morning, so you know it's going to be a short sermon. It got kind of awkward there for a second. I do not know what happened in the atmosphere. <laughs> Luke 12 verse 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And here comes the pyramid scheme in the Bible. Okay, are you guys ready for this one? Okay, 33. Sell your possessions and give it to the, the needy. Give it to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old. With a treasure in the heavens that does not fail. When no thief approaches and no moth destroys. Verse 34, this is the point that we're going to talk about this morning. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let's pray together and then we're going to speak a little bit about this. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Thank you for our friends and our family that is that is rocked up this morning, Father. It's a privilege to be in your house, Father. We pray that our gathering this morning will be a pleasing fragrance before your throne. Father, I pray and ask that you would touch my lips and anoint me, Father, so that when I speak, it will be words of power and authority, Father, that can impact our lives and change the way we do things so that we can take a step closer to you. Our hearts belong to you. We pray that in Jesus' wonderful name and everyone says, Amen. All right, so my theme this morning, you can go to the next slide for me. It's about to... It's about being wealthy. But the thing is... No, the thing about being wealthy is... I, I, I was I going to explain to you where I got this theme, theme from. So I was driving in the bucket and listening to a very popular radio, radio station um, as we were driving down. And I heard this question was asked. Um, and the, the omrooper, the, the around caller, he was asking the people listening to them and said, listen here, what was that sign when you were younger, you know, you went to school and by the, the stuff your friends had, you could immediately pick up, listen here, these guys, these guys, they packing, okay? They, they've got money. And what, what were the signs, okay? Well, let, let, I didn't have an opportunity to speak then, so now I'm going to answer them on, on your behalf, okay? So here's the thing. When you were at school, the guy who always had the... Next slide. The guy who always had ham on his bread. You guys knew. Oh, come on now. God, the, the guy who had ham in for life. You just knew that guy was next level, okay? <laughs> Am I lying? Come on, you guys know what I'm talking about. You always had that one friend, you know. And, and you know, sometimes even Pologne is acceptable in certain occasions because that's not something we had. I had a wonderful mother that can do a lot of things, but she can't spread peanut butter. Yeah, yeah. So it's not gossiping if she's, if she's here. So you know when you take a scoop of peanut butter and you just leave it in the middle of the bread, you guys know what I'm talking <laughs> You guys also feel so shy. Laugh, it's fine. She's going to be angry at me, not at you. It's fine. It's fine. And then you get to school and these guys got ham. And I'm like, <laughs> or sometimes my mom would be so nice. She wants to bedarf us, okay? She wants to, to treat us, spoil us. She puts on syrup, okay? But the problem is, for some reason, the syrup starts off in the middle of the bread. But by lunchtime, it's kind of at the other side, going through the bread, and it becomes crusty. It's crunchy. <laughs> Go, are you, do you, the No, no, come on, man. The, the, the bottom side was so, it, it crystallized. I don't know what happened to the bread, but it was weird. But there was only one guy that was more wealthy than the guy with ham on. And that's the guy with a ham 
and she's on. God, you guys know what I'm talking about, God. Those those guys are just next level. Right? I mean, we were all the other kids with this one side, and you got the guy with the, the nice, soft, <laughs> fresh bread, ham and cheese. And we just kind of never, never liked him, you know. But it gets even further. Goes even further. What is wealth measured as a kid? Well, let me let me tell you this. It's not only ham and cheese. But the, the sandwiches are wrapped as well. You guys know what I'm talking about. They've got these weird paper stuff around the sandwiches and it's folded nicely. I didn't have that. Okay. <laughs> it was wonderful. So uh, the mayonnaise on the one bread and the, the syrup on the other kind of mixed in between somewhere halfway through. And then these rake guys, we don't like them. They've got these nice stuff. Now as an adult today, there's another sign of wealthiness for me today. And that is anyone who's got real butter in their house are, are just wealthy guys. Come on. You guys know what I'm talking about, okay? Some of us aren't. We have butter, but it's because we take the ocean basket butters they have and we put it in our pocket. <laughs> are you a bunch of hypocrites? You know, they're, they're just going back to the old school They. What was a sign of wealthy people in my... It's the people who had the, the, the Walkman. You guys know what I'm talking about. You were cool when you had that tape in your pocket and you had the earphones on. Man, that, was, that was wealthy people. Now, for me, as a person, I, I enjoy games. When I was younger, we had this neighbor who I, I enjoyed visiting him because they were, they were quite well off. Or at least his parents, they, they, they bought a lot of toys and stuff. And so, yeah, he had a PC back then, but he had games on the PC as well, okay? So it wasn't just that Minesweeper that I had to play on my computer. My parents, they bought me a computer, second-hand old-ish, and then I had Minesweeper at least. But my friend, he had Timon and Pumbaa's Adventure. And I can remember visiting, and it was so amazing. The, the cartoons that we were watching, he was playing as the characters, and I just got Windows Mine Minesweeper. I still don't know how that game worked. But in any case, so we all have this different... <laughs> it's a, this is therapy for me. Um, you thought I'm here to, to encourage you. No, you guys are making me feel better for the week ahead. And this brought me to this idea of wealth, because we all have a different opinion about what it means to be wealthy. And, you know, we, we quickly link up wealth with happiness. We quickly link up wealth with this idea that this is where we want to be. I don't know anyone in my life that says, I don't want money. Okay. I know a lot of people who get more money and jip over the SARS stuff and all those type of things. I, I know a lot of people who want to gain money, but I don't know a lot of people that does not want money. So we've got this whole idea about wealth, but I want to have a different angle this morning. I don't want to talk about wealth. This morning but not wealthy in the sense of you guys uh, how we understand this so i'm going to balance these two terminologies of being wealthy from a financial perspective and being wealthy with my spelling mistake w e double l being wealthy being wealthy okay <laughs> okay so I want to define the word, the proper word wealth. If you guys are watching online, you kind of need to focus on the PowerPoint because there's a lot of play on words that I'm doing. So otherwise you're going to miss completely what I'm saying this morning. So wealth is defined as an abundance of valuable possessions or money. Okay. Valuable possessions or money. But here's the thing. We kind of need to define the valuable possessions. Because it's different for people. In general, when we think of wealth, it's usually a money thing. But the word wealth is actually much more complex and much more deeper than just the financial element. There's a second thing to this description of wealth, okay? Um, it says a plentiful supply of a particular desirable thing. But here's the question that we need to ask. What are those desirable things? And you guys know, we are a bilingual church, so for the Afrikaans guys, what is those desirable things, okay? You can mix and match it, it doesn't matter. We don't judge in this church, okay? We are very, we love people. But the reality is, as we're going to talk about this, and we're actually going to talk about this for the next couple of weeks, this is just part one, is that there is a difference between being wealthy and being wealthy, 
And all the online guys listening has got no clue what I'm saying right now. Okay, check the spelling mistake, okay? There's a difference between wealthy and being W-E-L-L, wealthy. Sometimes we confuse this because we think being well has got to do with being wealthy. And so I want to talk about a Bible study that I've talked about quite, quite extensively of a, a, a couple of times already. But I want, to, I want to hang around this because this is so, such a beautiful parable that Jesus spoke about. And the parable is called this. Jesus explains it as the, the rich fool. Astounding. The rich fool. That's not how we see rich people, is it? We don't see them as, as foolish. They do sometimes weird stuff, okay? But it's never in the sense of foolish. On the contrary, when someone has got a lot of money, we kind of listen to them a little bit more carefully for some reason. We kind of give a little bit more respect. We kind of give a little bit more value to their statements because they are wealthy. But here's the thing, and this is the parable that Jesus spoke about, that you can look successful on the outside, but Jesus says you can still be foolish on the inside. I'm going to say this one more time. You can look successful on the outside, but you can still be foolish on the inside. And so what I want to do today is I kind of want to just touch on this parable that Jesus was speaking about. We're going to lean in and we're just going to extract what God wants to share with us this morning. Okay, Let's start. Luke 12 verse 13. By the way, you can, yeah, you can stay there by this verse. If you are confused why we started with the scripture verse and where we are now, I tend to read a certain scripture verse at the beginning of my sermon, and then I tend to explain a couple of things, and at the end, at the conclusion, I kind of link them up. So if you're wondering where that verse pops in, I mean, it's all connected, and we're going to talk about this today. Okay. Someone in the crowd said to him, this is just a little bit earlier than our opening scripture verse in Luke 12 verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to him, this is Jesus, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me tell my brother he needs to give me my money okay he needs to show me the money of payback the money depends on what movie you were watching okay <laughs> so i just want to pause here for one second because there's always this idea and i want to talk just about this this is a little bit of a side note but i just want to get this off my chest for one second be careful of go to the next one for me deliberate poverty Okay, uh, let me just state this. Okay, let, let me just state this. Sometimes we use bad expenses as an excuse as generosity. And it's not generosity. Sometimes it's impulsiveness. Did you know that you can be selfless, selfless, selfishly generous? Did you know that? I'm going to say that one more time. You can be selfish in your generosity. And I call this something like deliberate poverty. Some people take pleasure in being poor. Can you believe this? Why? Because they feel they're better than other people. Some people like to suffer because they've got a better story to tell at the braai. Okay? Like something bad happened to you, but yeah, oh no, something worse happened to me. I don't have money for this because I gave it all to the church. Well, okay, maybe that one's okay. Okay, maybe that one. I'm just mentioning that. Out. But you know, so sometimes they, 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 we've got this idea of deliberate poverty, and I just want to address this, ladies and gentlemen. Be careful of deliberate poverty. Don't use your bad math skills as an excuse for just giving away. And I'm not, I'm not saying you are, please excuse this word. This is quoting my dad. I'm not saying you are stupid. I'm saying... <laughs> I'm not, no, 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 what I'm trying to say, I'm not saying you can't do maths. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about deliberately just giving stuff away so that you can look poor, so that you can say, ah, oh, I'm this awesome person. Well, it's not what generosity is about. And this is not what this passage is about, okay? So I'm not saying just throw everything out, okay? What we are talking about is this idea, when we talk about wealthy, is this idea of being balanced. You can go to the next one for me. And motive. Yes, there we go. For balance and motive will play an important role here. Balance and motive. You can be generous just because you want to look good. Then you're missing the point of generosity straight right there, okay? 
So we're going to talk a little bit about money, and I know that's always a sensitive topic, but I want you to open your heart. This is not, this is real spiritual value depth that we want to talk about. So we find Jesus ministering, and this guy pops up and says, tell my brother, he must give me what I want, what is owed to me. And then listen to what Jesus replies in verse 14. But he said to him, man, and, and that's like equivalent, like says, dude, near. Okay, that's, a, that's just, I'm just translating. I'm going to do a new translation of the Bible just to make it more relevant for you guys. So if this was in our time, okay, Jesus was standing here and he would say, he's preaching. And this guy pops up in the middle of talking about sin, talking about the Pharisees. The previous part talks about um, Jesus warning about the yeast and we must be walk the straight road. And then this guy pops up, excuse me, Jesus. We know about the sin, but I need money. So tell my brother to give me money. And Jesus kind of just gets frustrated. And he says, man, who made me judge or arbiter over you? Why are you bringing this to me? And in a sense, where this guy brought a, a situation before Jesus to say, listen, yeah, Jesus, do the right thing here. Yeah. And Jesus takes it one further and says, you're not even asking the right question to begin with. If you want to talk about righteousness and what is fair. Okay, listen to the next part. And now Jesus kind of just ignores him. And listen to the spiritual value. And this is, I want you to grab hold of this. Now Jesus says, take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. I want you to take hold of this. And I want this, everyone to listen. Irrespective of your income bracket. If you are not going to be actively guarding your heart, you're going to automatically fall into covetousness. In this idea of desiring things around you. Of wanting more. Of wanting to expand you. If you do not guard your heart, if you have not been guarding your heart, you're probably the person Jesus is speaking about right now. Be careful that you don't put your focus on the wrong things because you might become wealthy, but you won't be wealthy. Okay. W E double L. Okay. We must get a sign or something. I don't know. Just otherwise, I'm going to explain this the whole time. And for Jesus, it's not so much about being the world's wealthy, but Jesus is concerned if our inside is being wealthy. Okay. So he's warning about it. And now he says, and he said to them, take care and be on your guard against all covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Now I know this. I know this. I know this. We know this. You guys are smart. I'm sometimes smart. Okay. So we, we, we understand this idea. Oh, it's not about possessions. It's not about possession. So even though we understand this, it's not something we apply. Understanding and application is not the same thing. Understanding and application is not the same thing. I can understand a healthy diet. I can promise you I'm not going to choose a healthy diet, okay? I can understand the value of exercise. But I'm probably not going to choose the exercise, okay? You guys, it feels like I'm preaching to the right crowd because you're very quiet on this one, okay? Thank you, Patrick. It's not the same thing. And Jesus is concerned, be careful, guard your heart, otherwise you're going to be successful in areas that does not matter. You're going to win in areas where the competition is not even, you're going to beat an opponent and that is not even what is important to God. And now Jesus is going to tell this parable, and I just want to break this quickly down as we are going to get to the in part of this. And he told them a parable saying, the land of a rich man produced plentiful. And he thought to himself, what shall I do? For I have no way to store my crops. Next one. And you guys know the story. And he said, I will do this. I will tear down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will, st and there I will store all my grain and my goods. In other words, He's doing something very logical. He's doing something that makes sense, okay? If you've got more money, you buy a bigger bag, okay? Like what the ladies do with the shoes, okay? Just buy another closet or I don't, I don't know, I don't know. Okay. But listen carefully to what took place in this guy's heart. 
just want to add this to you. It seems like Jesus is expressing a successful businessman. A guy who knows he's been doing the right things. He had this drive of progress, of going forward. And then he got lucky in between where his hard work produced plentiful in a season where he was. So I want you to imagine this guy. He's got drive. He's showing up for work. He's doing what he can do. And he's just making sure that he's, he's planting seeds in the right season. He's training his staff. He's doing all the right things. And suddenly a boom takes place. And now the logical thing to do is to expand. But his attitude changed. And not in a sinful way, by the way. Okay? I'm going to show you how we are like this guy more than what you want to. Okay? So when, when this works, go to the next one for me. He says the following, and I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid out for many years. Relax. Eat. Drink. And be merry. Doesn't that sound like a wonderful Saturday afternoon? Relax, eat, drink, and be merry. But what happened was, there was a shift in his attitude. Here's the thing. What brought him to success, he sold for luxury. And that kind of did not carry him any further. It did not progress. In it. And I want you to concentrate really carefully to this statement, because I'm going to explain the next part. It's going to link in with each other. So his attitude changed. His work ethic built his success, and then he sold his work ethic for comfortability. And the moment his attitude changed, God refers to him, uh, next one, as a fool. Someone who built something successful, who is wealthy according to the worldly standards, suddenly, according to the inside, Jesus or God sees as he's not well on the inside but it's not sin ladies and gentlemen he wasn't doing anything wrong but the attitude changed and the drive was not there anymore because he made it he thought he could stop bishop td jake said this one time and this was a mind opening idea he said he's got young guys that's ministering in his church now if you don't bishop td jake's huge name as a preacher internationally and he goes and one day one of the youngsters walks up to me and say bishop you have no idea how nerve-wracking it is to preach in front of you i mean it's bishop td jakes the pressure is so much and the bishop turns around and says you have no idea how tough it is to preach to my sons every sunday in other words there's even more pressure on him because he's got sons following him. And he needs to be ready in season, out of season, week in, week out, while his sons has opportunities to slip and be covered. He does not have that benefit. And he says that there's so much pressure. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that this, this, this hunger on the inside, it cannot go away. It's not about arriving at a destination, but it's about an attitude on the inside. That's why many wealthy people, and when you especially look at the business sector, they don't really enjoy speaking about their money. You know why? Because it's not even about the money. They want to be successful in their work ethics. They want to be known for what they did, not for how much money they have. Their reputation is more important than what is in the bank. The bank is just a blessing. It's just an extra. It's just a reward. But they want to be known for they did something. But when you sell this on the inside, you kind of miss. So here's the question. Why was the rich man a fool? Listen very carefully to this next statement. Because he thought prosperity was his calling. He thought being wealthy was his calling. He thought God's plan for him was to get a lot of money, be successful, and relax. How many of us do what we do because we want to reach a goal to be wealthy? How many of us do what we and we think that it's our calling to be rich? Where? <laughs> Where do we get this idea? We've got this thing inside of us that we want to get more money. And, and don't get me wrong. 
There's nothing wrong. Uh, this is why I want to just explain this very carefully. There's nothing wrong with progress. There's nothing wrong with pushing for more salary. I'm not, talk, I'm not saying sin. I'm not saying sin. I'm talking about the agenda. Some people really are convinced that the day they make enough money, they are walking in their calling that God has called them to do. And here's this parable where Jesus is saying the exact opposite. How many of you feel useless based on your bank statement at home? How many of you feel that God can't use you because you're not making enough money in the bank? Am I? Oh, okay, maybe it's the wrong church preaching this to. No, I want you to know that I, I want, I, I'm very, very serious in what I'm saying. Prosperity is not a calling. Being rich is not a calling. Why are you chasing something that God has not called you to be? And don't get me wrong. If you get wealthy on your way there, fantastic. Share some with us. We love it. Dude. We want some coffee and some rust there, okay? I'm tired of this box mail thing here at the back, okay? Any case, any case, any case. Okay. Please do not misunderstand what I'm trying to tell you this morning, okay? Rich is not your calling. God can use you where you are right now, with your bank statement the way it is. Some of the most phenomenal leaders in the history of the church, when you read the Bible, were not wealthy men. Stop linking wealth with this, God has called me. No. Church is right on this a lot. Maybe not yes specifically, but there are other churches, ladies and gentlemen, where prosperity is a direct sign of God's favor in your life. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be controversial this morning. Nonsense. John the Baptist was successful, even though he had nothing. Jesus was successful, even though he had nothing. Paul was successful, even while he was in prison, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to break this mold of thinking wealth and calling is the same thing. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. Wealth, having that wealth, it's nice. There's many blessings. There's a lot of things that you can enjoy. But being wealthy is not the W-E-L-L wealth. It's not the same thing. So that's why I want to talk about this being wealthy idea from the, my theme this morning. And I stated that a beginner's guide to life, but from Jesus' perspective. And Jesus concludes this, paragraph, uh, this parable, and he says the following. Just like this guy, this wealthy guy, so is the one who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. You can be wealthy in the bank, and miss Jesus in your heart. And then the only thing that you have is wealth. But you aren't well. Now, I'm going to conclude. I've got three minutes left. Later on, I want to... The, the, the scripture verse that I'm reading now, we opened with the scripture verse. But just before the scripture verse, Jesus was telling this parable of this rich fool. And then this chapter kind of comes to a close and it says... For where your treasure is, there will your heart also be. This is not rocket science that I'm going to explain to you. You've heard this a million times. What you value will receive your attention. What you value will receive most of your attention. And you can build wealth. But my question is, are you focusing on the things that God feels that's important for you build wealth but don't leave god outside the door because then you're not being well the first step to becoming wealthy in the context of what i'm trying to explain to you w e w -L, l is to determine what you treasure the most what do you treasure the most what is the most important things in your life is it family well, if you value family, the amount of money in your bank will not reflect that. 
if you value health, having a lot of money in the bank will not reflect. What do you value? Because where your treasure is, there your heart will be. It's difficult to love your family and love your job. Your job will build you wealth, but your job won't build you your family. The difference between being wealthy or wealthy is where your treasure is at. If you want to be wealthy in the traditional manner, then you're going to value possessions. But if you want to be wealthy in the context of what I'm speaking about today, you will value relationships. If money is your treasure, you will never be W-E-L-L wealthy. I'm going to say this one more time. If money is your treasure, you will never be well. You will be, this sounds so confusing. You will be wealthy if money is your treasure. This morning, as we're going to start on this journey going forward over the next couple of weeks, I want to start off by speaking about money. I want to ask you, where's your focus? Because Jesus told us that if you want the beginner's guide to life, it's so much more than focusing on possessions. It's about focusing on relationships. And you can be wealthy, but are you well? And I'm going to conclude with this idea, with my theme, be wealthy. And I underlined be. I need you to understand something. It's something that you need to do. I'm going to say this one more time. You need to be wealthy. It's not going to happen automatically. It's something, it's something that you need to actively pursue in your life. Sometimes you have to say no to wealth in order to be well before God. Sometimes you need to say no to wealth to stand in a relationship with those around you. Sometimes you need to say no, but here's the question. Where is your treasure? Where is your treasure? Because that is where your heart is going to lean towards. I want to speak to people this morning that feels God can't use them because they don't have money. It's the biggest lie that the, some churches have told people for generations. And then I want to warn people who's got money to be careful to think that God has favored you because your land has produced abundance. Be careful. Jesus spoke exactly the opposite. That your finances is not specifically a reflection. So I want to speak into your heart this morning to say that God loves you. God cares for you. God wants to use you. Stop using an empty bank account as an excuse. Because you can be well. If you make sure that your treasure is at the right place. So stop with this poverty type of thing. Start building into relationships this morning. Start stepping into where God is calling you to stand up and to be. Stop admiring people who's got a lot of money in the bank as if, if God has placed special favor over their lives. On many occasions, I'm not saying all occasions, I'm not saying all occasions, but there are so many occasions in the news. You guys know this, you guys need to read the newspapers. Where leaders stand up and they show their wealth and call it God's favor just to go to jail because of the fraud they committed behind the scenes. And then we sell this off as favor. And then I sell you stones and I sell you oil. And I can't know it, so if you can't handle this, don't watch. But uh, we sell things from the church to show God's prosperity. And I'm telling you, God can love you when you've got nothing left. I, I want to go further. I said God especially loves you when you've got nothing left. 
It's not a prosperity game. It's a relationship game. And I hope this message is kind of releasing you from pressure, feeling like God does not love you. God does not care. God cannot use you. It's not about wealth. It's about being well. It's about being well in the inside. So I want to encourage you this morning. The first step, as I'm going to conclude, is I want you to be this from this moment onwards. Don't just sit back passively. I want you to be wealthy. I want you to evaluate where your treasure is. I want you to make plans to put the most important things first and then put your heart there and pursue that with all of your life. And when the wealth, the traditional wealth comes, that's just an added blessing. That's just an added blessing. And it's good. And don't get me wrong, I'm not speaking against money. If your heart is in the right place, money can be a very powerful tool. But if your heart's in the wrong place, money can be a very destructive tool as well. It can literally pull you away from God. But if you are well, your wealth can be an advantage. But instead of running after this, Listen to this parable of Jesus. Life does not exist in the abundance of possessions. But when you can be well, when you can have your family around you, when you can have a relationship with God, when you can meet with someone face to face, when you can be well before God, that is what God values in heaven. Don't confuse being wealthy with being well. We'll carry on next week. Let's pray this morning. <clears throat> Father, thank you for your presence here this morning. Thank you for speaking to us this morning, Father. My prayers, I want to pray for each one over here, Father, that had a burden on their back because of possessions, Father. And so we call on your spirit and we ask that we remove that baggage, Father. We want to remove that labels. We know that you love us, Father. And this relationship is not performance-based, Father. It's not about an income bracket, Father, but it is following you within our season, Father. We want it to be well with our souls. So I speak over everyone here this morning, Father, whatever season they find themselves in, may they always be able to declare that it is well. Our hearts belong to you. Father, we get so distracted with materialistic things. We get so distracted with status, Father. We get so distracted with ego in this world, Father. But we, you, your son just reminded us what is the most important thing. Thank you for your faithfulness. We pray right now, Father, for those who are overly burdened. That their burden would be exchanged for experience of love and grace in their lives. That for long enough the enemy has spoken things over their lives. Father. May this morning be a first message that speaks freedom and grace and mercy into their lives. Father, so that they can stand up and be the Davids that you want them to be. And the Pauls that you want them to be. Thank you for your faithfulness. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.